the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah. The only thing me and my father disagree on is like right now I'm wearing you know, a Mets shirt, right? Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I'm wearing this is because I, I'm going to be honest with you, I, uh, I, you know, jerked off today. I was coming in a little heavy. I was a, I was a little anxious. I jerked, whatever it happens. And, and then I kind of just let it sit there on me. And um, I got up. And the shirt that I had was at the edge of my bed that I was going to wear. And I got up and it just leaked. It fell onto the shirt. Mm. So I was like, this is the only shirt I have. So I threw in a Mets shirt, knowing that some of my friends back home are going to be like, are you a fucking Mets fan now? I thought you were a Yankees fan. And How I'm, dumb is that? Because they're both from New York. That's my thing. The For dumbest. me, it's I'm New York. I root but for Mets New York. Mets is like people who use Android phones. Yes. Like you're a rebel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> It's true. You dude, know? dude, you know why I'm a Mets fan? I was born in Queens. My father's from the Bronx, not a Yankees fan, but Mets fan, the owner of the team, Steve Cohen, right? He's, you know, big owner, you know, whatever. Really nice guy. I did, in the pandemic, I did his 60th birthday party. Oh, no. Private party, right? In a room like this. Did it suck? Here's what happened. So... <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> So, I can't wait for this one. So, so, okay, so here, here's what happened. All right, so. So, all right. I get a call, right? Okay. You're going to do this show. What happened was, I talk, I, my Jasmine, my family's Puerto Rican. My kids are Puerto Rican. I have material about having this Puerto Rican family, right? Steve's wife is Puerto Rican, okay? They have a 60th birthday party, and... What I thought the birthday party was going to be was him and his family. I'll do my Puerto Rican jokes. You know, the, the wife will like it. You know, whatever. It's 20 minutes. You know, great money. It's, you know, cool opportunity. Do it. It's a challenge, right? It's the pandemic. Not much going on. They rented out this restaurant. Nobody's supposed to know about it. It's like in the back room thing. So I go. So I get there and it's no, it's him and his 10 friends, all guys. Just all guys sitting at a table like this having dinner. They do not know comedy is supposed to happen. The wife thought it'd be a good idea to get a comedian in there for his 60th birthday that she wasn't invited to because this was a guy's thing. And so a 60-year-old billionaire doesn't know who the fuck I am. If you're going to have comedy, oh. have Jerry Seinfeld, have right. Joe Rogan, have somebody that they know. They have no idea. So the, the guy who you know, was like Steve's assistant who, the you know, has to answer to his wife. I think his name was Ned. He goes, um, are you the comedian? I was like, yeah. He goes, all right. He goes, uh, what, what's your name again? And I was like, it's Chris DiStefano. I, I thought like Mrs. Cohen knew me. She was like, yeah, she's not here. Like that's, uh, this is, it's all guys in there. I said, well, you know, do you not want me to do it? He goes, no, she already paid you. Like I, I, I ha you have to do it. So I was like, okay. So I was like, well, where, just show me where like the microphone is. He was like, we don't have anything. There's no microphone. There's no lights. He goes, we were thinking, he goes, <laughs> he goes, they just got served their entrees. So we were thinking you can just stand in the front of the table and do a few minutes. Oh boy. So I was like, you know that this is going to be, this is a nightmare. And he was like, it doesn't feel like they're going to like you. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so ned um, my hands are sweating for so, you <sighs> so ned <sighs> ned goes listen they just got the entrees just go out there and so he, i swear i'm not i swear to god i told him my name three times he goes uh he goes all right uh steve you know uh your wife had a nice little surprise for you we got a comedian we got a, a you know fun comedian and he goes um and he goes, so so here he is, and and he goes, Chris, um, Chris, and then one of the guys went, Chris Rock, is it Chris Rock? And then he goes, No, it's not Chris Rock, it's Chris. What's your last name, kid? And I was like, uh, De Stefano. And then as I'm walking in, somebody goes, Who the fuck is that? And so uh. and so I walk in and I get up there right away, and I was like, Hey guys, I know this is probably not what you wanted. I can leave right now, but I I have you know uh, if you want me to do some jokes like you know I'll I'll do them right now and then one guy was like yeah do it he goes but make it quick so I was like okay this is good so I go out there and Joe I am fucking bombing like you can't imagine 
<laughs> like a full zero. All you hear is knives and forks hitting the plate, people chewing. <sighs> At some point, I don't know who threw it, a shrimp bounced off my chest. Somebody hit me with a shrimp, and they're dying in the back of the table. Tommy Mottola was there. Um, you know, who the, the famous uh, record, record producer. producer and, you know, was married to Mariah Carey. So I go, uh, I go, oh, Mr. Mottola, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan, you know, of, of, of your ex-wife. Uh, you know, I love her work. He goes, yeah, I bet you're a big fan of cock, too. Big laugh, you know, like I'm like, oh, my wow. God. So then finally, the only person laughing. Tommy Mottola dunked on you, got the dunked, biggest laugh of the room. Crushed. <laughs> you know, the only person laughing is Steve's son, who's 30 years old, who's become a friend of mine, Josh, great guy. He's laughing in the corner, not at my material, just because he's like this, because he knew my podcast. He was right. like, oh, my God, this, this is crazy. sucks. <laughs> so, so then Steve, Steve finally goes, he goes, listen to me. He stops. He goes, he goes, I'm doing a joke. He wasn't very nice. He goes, OK. He goes, uh, what did my wife tell you? And I said, well, I'm, you know, Mr. Cohen, she told me just come out here, birthday gift for you, you know, do 15 minutes and, and you know, like just, you know, uh, uh, just do the best I can. And she thought you'd like me because I talk about the Puerto Rican kids and all that. He goes, yeah, 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 that's, I'm not Puerto Rican though. I was like, no, I know, I know. And he goes, um, how about this? I'll make you a deal. He goes, what are your five best minutes? And I said, well, I, I did the David Letterman show a few years ago. He goes, oh, I know, I know David Letterman. I said, yeah. He said, uh. He said, why don't you do that? How about, and he goes, do, do that. Do, the, do those five best. He goes, I'm going to tell my guys to listen. Do those five best. He goes, if you can get me to laugh in those five minutes, I'll double whatever my wife gave you. He goes, did you get it already? She, she, I said, yeah, I think she wired it to my agent. He goes, I'll, I'll double it. Whatever it is. I don't even know what the number is. I'll, times two, give me your best five. So I just like planted my feet and I just to the wall, didn't even look at anybody, just did my exact David Letterman set, which is about being on the subway. I just came back from England, like shit from 10 years ago, but I had it and I did it and they started to laugh and sure as shit, that's what he did. He had, he, he doubled the money, turned out to be a big thing, you know, for me. And then what happened was, is I had to sign all these NDAs not to talk about anything. But you just talked about it. Well, here's the thing. I, <laughs> so, I had to sign all these NDAs not to talk about it. But I thought I had to sign NDAs because it was during COVID times and they were like renting out a restaurant, which like you really couldn't do back then. So I was like, just don't mention that. And I, I was like, uh, and I thought it was really more for like, you know, they don't want reporters showing right. up to the actual event and them getting in trouble. But it's like the next day, who cares? So I do my podcast the next day. Hey, babe, with Sal Volcano. And I, I start the show with, dude, I fucking ate it last night. Oh, Here's the story, no. right? Oh, Going crazy. No. That episode comes out the next day. We filmed mm. it in the morning. It came out that night. So the next morning, so two days removed from the Cohen gig, I wake up. I have 20 missed calls from my manager, my agent, lawyer. I wake up, I'm like, what the fuck happened? So my manager gets on the phone, he goes, take down that episode, dude, take it down. I said, what? He goes, you broke, you violated the NDA. You just said all these things about the Cohen gig. You can't do that. His lawyers are saying you're going to get sued right now and they're going to take you to court and they will not lose. Whatever. And, and then so I, I, I just hung up the phone on him. I was like, I, I need a second. And I just hung up. I said, what the fuck do I do? Because I'm like, I'm not taking that shit down. I, I, you know, it's comedy, whatever. And then so I, I'm like, let me calm down. Let me calm down. So I scrolling on Instagram, right? This is what we do. Baseline scrolling on Instagram like a fucking crocodile. I'm sc scrolling and I see DMs from Steve's wife, Steve's daughter, Steve's son. And I'm hearts like this now. I'm like, oh, I, maybe I am fucked. Cause like now the family themselves, right. it was all, I can't believe you talked about it. And hey babe, we loved it. That's amazing. My dad's dying laughing. Come to a Mets game, throw out the first pitch. The, the mom being like, I want to meet your wife. Oh my God, I can't, thanks for mentioning that. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck? So I call my manager and, and I'm like, I have messages from the family saying that it's okay. And then he's like, all right, hold on. And then he calls. He says, send me those messages. I send him the messages. And then within five minutes, lawyers backed off because all the, Steve didn't tell them to do that. The, oh. the legal team was just like, that's a violation. Oh. 
oh, I don't even okay. check with Steve. You fucked up. And then so and then it went away like that. And then <sighs> the family now has become like friends of mine. It's like really the Cohen family owns the Mets are like awesome, amazing people. It's like it's almost even though it's a big major league baseball team, it's like when you go to the game, it's like Josh, you don't even need a ticket, dude. Come walk in the back door, walk in with us. Like so cool. And now and then Steve goes, I'm gonna let you redeem yourself. <laughs> in the baseball season he goes I'm gonna let you redeem yourself okay I was just at the game and he goes here's what we'll do he goes it looks like rain he was like if there's a rain delay I'm gonna give you the mic I'm gonna put you on the jumbotron and you do five minutes <laughs> I said you want me to do five minutes to cold wet Mets fans that are angry about the team not playing he was like do you want to redeem yourself or not and I was like, I'll do it. So, <laughs> so, so we have, me, I think it's on my Instagram somewhere. Oh my God. So we have, I'm wearing, dude, the worst shirt, like a floral printed stupid shirt. My friends, I was sitting in the owner suite, right? My friends are diehard Mets fans. They were sitting in the stands for this. They didn't know this was happening. So rain delay comes. They have the Mets announcer, again, who messes up my name, call me Chris Destalopoulos. I'll never forget that. She goes, Chris Destalopoulos. She goes, I was going to do a few minutes of comedy for you. So, And then the camera's just on me. And I'm I don't even have a mic. They had, <laughs> you know, one of those mics that you pin to your shirts? Yes. So I had that. So I was like doing that bit where I was like, yes. and I'm bombing. <laughs> <laughs> horrifically, horrifically bombing. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. So I'm, oh my god! I'm bombing in front of <clears throat> you know thirty thousand. Where when I got <clears throat> Steve Cohen, by the way, and his friends are dying, <laughs> dying laughing because they knew that that was going to happen. <laughs> and then Steve goes, he goes, "You're all right, man. You're 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 good. You're all right." <sighs> and I was like, that, And then I got all these texts, and my friends, my my boy Pat was like, "Dude, I was in the stands for that. Like, you know, we're huddled under." He goes, "You were bombing." He goes, "I heard multiple people say they were going to unfollow you on Instagram for this shit." <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, it was so bad. He goes, it was literally so bad. He said there was a little kid started to cry. It was <laughs> horrific. And he goes, and your shirt fucking sucked. Uh, and I was like, and so, uh, so uh, it, it was one of those moments. But I say all that to say, that's why I wear the Mets shirt. I'm New York first. And the Cohen family the is awesome. And the Mets are awesome. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, it was, it was like one of those things where a good thing turned, a bad thing turned into a good thing. You know? That's hilarious. Dude, it's, it was, dude, bombing like <laughs> Joe. The one at City Field was worse. I mean, that was worse because not only like, I was in the control room. When did you, how, be between knowing you were going to have to do it and doing it, how much time was it? Less than five minutes. Oh my God. <laughs> Jamie, is there a way if you could, like, Chris DiStefano, Mets game, ah, bombing, flower shirt? It, oh, I put it on my Instagram. It, I, oh, I don't know if you could be able to find it, but. Oh my God, my abs. But, dude, it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> And you know what was the worst part? <clears throat> is I was sitting in the control room. That's where they had me go live from. And I was bombing for the people in the control room. They were just like looking at me. And then they were still doing the thing. Like, when are we back from rain delay? I was like doing a bit. Like, you know, like doing like a clean bit. And they were like, what What was it? Uh, is the storm coming in? Not listening. And then at one point, the, the, I was in the middle of my bit. And the guy was like, buddy, shh. I'm listening to the MLB. Oh my and I was God. like, oh my God. And I fucking ate it. Uh... But... But they were, but you know, they were pretty nice to me. <laughs> They've been pretty nice to me. But it was, it was bad. And Ugh. my friend Josh tells me, he goes, "Yeah, dude, like I've, I, <sighs> I, you've ate, you've eaten it as bad as you can eat it." <sighs> wow. Then they had me come out for a fundraiser. This was like in a comedy club. I fucking bombed that, and I was just like in a comedy club. Not a comedy club. It was like a, it was the Paramount Theater. It was like a fundraiser. But I had. Um, come out, it's that classic thing where the one comic they have that nobody knows about comes out and I came out right after the video of the fundraiser for the kids with cancer oh. and the mom and dad who lost their child to cancer oh. and then I have to come out and just be like, let's forget about that and do this. Oh. And so, and then they had these polar bears on stage that were like raffled off. They were like a thousand dollar stuffed animal polar bears for Pete Alonzo. They call him the polar bears, the best player on the Mets. And uh, I didn't know that. So I was bombing so hard for the thing. I just started throwing these polar bears into the crowd just to be funny. And they were like, that was $5,000 worth of raffle gifts you just threw into the crowd now. And I was like, um, 
sorry, <laughs> I don't know what to do. And then they were like, well, I, I don't know. Like, you might have to pay for that. Like his, you know, and then, and then I, I was like, all right, I mean, I guess if I have to do it, I'm sorry. And then and again, his dad was like, ah, fuck it, dude. It's polar bears. Just let him keep it. He was like, it was, he was like, that might've been the worst one of all three. I was like, thanks. Oh boy. But they still like me.